My name is David Daniel Ball and these are the headlines for Tuesday, the 17th of February, 2009. It's time to go, Brendan Nelson is quitting politics. Grim reality, some bodies will never be identified. Jeff Fennick released over ridiculous assault claim. Bong bust, no charges to be filed against Phelps. Worst situation since World War II, Japan's economy plummets. Push to ban online blogs on arson suspects, suck a look. Aussies in Thai jail recommended for pardon. Girl starves to death over dentist phobia. Primary teacher faces child sex charges. Raise taxes to cover dental care in report. A billion dollar plan to keep apprentices off the dole. New laws to tackle lock-in contracts. Heelsville on alert. Death toll at 189. And in comments. From Tim Brunero, some light comedy. Stop sticking up for Julie Bishop. Bloggers and armchair experts across the nation have fallen over each other today to say what a brave person Shadow Treasurer Julie Bishop was by falling on her sword. But Tim Brunero thinks otherwise. Ground Zero through the fiery eyes from Piers Ackerman. Spirit of 1976, we see how we once advertised flavored milk. We were an innocent people back then. Shame blazoned, last night's ABC Watch offered one of its rare total shamings, in this case, of Sydney Morning Herald columnist Miranda Devine, who pointed out that green policies contributed to the extent of Victoria's bushfires. That's not opinion writing, Miranda, that's hate mongering. You and your paper, which saw fit to blazon your ugly piece across the front page of its website, should be both ashamed of yourselves. Oddly, Media Watch never wheeled out the same shame hammer when Devine's fellow Fairfax columnists Peter Fitzsimons and Michael Lunig kissed up to a mass murderer. Presumably they were considered to be love-mongering. Last week's program was also illustrative with an item pointing out several technical errors in recent ABC broadcasts. Viewers may have thought the program was critical of ABC failings, but no. Media Watch was instead criticizing new technology that required fewer tax-funded jobs. Share with Al, global warming makes people share. Some researchers believe we could owe our consciences to climate change and, in particular, to a period of intense global warming between 50,000 and 800,000 years ago. The proto-humans living in the forest had to adapt to living on hostile open plains where they would have been easy prey for formidable predators such as big cats. This would have forced them to devise rules for hunting in groups and sharing food. Difficult to imagine Al Gore sharing food. You'd rather take your chances against a saber-toothed sea kitten. And an update, a nice line from Henry Halloway on our most beloved Gore Effect guy. He's the only former vice president tracked by both Secret Service agents and Doppler radar. Barack Obama seems to have inherited the Gore magic, not surprisingly really when you consider how close he is to environmental lunatics. Christ, you can't believe in a church billboard in Singapore. Poor Jesus emails HM. He's reduced to being the Burger King to Obama's McDonald's. Story uncut. Pakistan Dawn, the nation, the Daily Times, Pakistan's media seems less timid about covering a New York State beheading than does media in the U.S. Meanwhile, a gem of understatement from Croatia. Muzamul Hassan established his own TV network to show Muslims in a good light. Decapitation charges will not help. From Andrew Bolt, your personal train. Finally, public transport for the 21st century. Another system called Ultra and developed by the British co company Advanced Transport Systems also offers an on-demand personal transport with virtually no waiting time to take individual passengers non-stop to their chosen destination. It's already being built and tested at Heathrow. Health fascists, get muscle, please. No one tell Kevin Rudd it's the Big Brother scheme that would appeal. Six councils in Britain will be taking part in a pilot scheme which will see inspectors paid £8.50 an hour with double time on Saturdays to visit our homes and offer advice on what we eat and what we throw away. Spend, spend, spend another billion dollars more from a man who already has us heading $35 billion in the red. Employers will receive a cash subsidies to stop apprentices being thrown into the doll queue as part of a multi-billion dollar job rescue plan. The plan is expected to cost at least $1 billion, with some sources claiming it could cost close to $2 billion. In a first, the government is planning to subsidize the wages of apprentices who face the sack or who have been made redundant. Since Kevin Rudd doesn't know better than 
than anyone who to employ, which industries to subsidize and how to spend, why doesn't he cut out the middleman and simply nationalize the private sector? More fires could mean no water. Another reason to build another dam to diversify our sources and leave us less dangerously vulnerable. While Bolt and other journalists claim the front bench scalp of Bishop, Costello points out the obvious. Mr. Costello is believed to have told people that Ms. Bishop had done nothing wrong. Save Afghanistan? Australia's Major General Jim Molan, who was Chief of Staff of Coalition Forces in Iraq, rightly wonders if we're ready to do what we need to to save Afghanistan. I wish Rudd had earned this kicking. Kevin Rudd doesn't seem to quite deserve this criticism from warming extremist James Hansen, which is a pity. A year ago, I wrote to Gordon Brown asking him to place a moratorium on coal-fired power plants in Britain. I've asked the same of Angela Merkel, Barack Obama, Kevin Rudd, and other leaders. The reason is this. Coal is the single greatest threat to civilization and all life on our planet. The trains carrying coals to power plants are death trains. Coal fire power plants are factories of death. The German and Australian governments pretend to be green. The Australian government was elected on a platform of solving climate problem, but then, with the help of industry, it set emission targets so high as to guarantee untold disasters for the young, let alone the unborn. These governments are not green, they're black. Coal black. Thank you, James. U.S. grows cold on global warming. That's some cold year that the United States has had. Talking us into trouble, Professor Bradley Schiller makes a criticism that doesn't apply just to Barack Obama. President Barack Obama has turned fear-mongering into an art form. He has repeatedly raised the specter of another Great Depression. First, he did so to win votes in the November election. He's done so again recently to sway congressional votes for a stimulus package. This fear-mongering may be good politics, but it's bad history and bad economics. Meet Name, the medic, and other innocents. The slaughter of the innocents in Gaza turns out to be not quite what the United Nations and the leftist media claim. Swatting humans aside, as I've said before, the trouble with demanding animals be treated like humans is that you then tend to treat humans like animals. Pilger's vileness. I hope that at least any Jewish readers of the left will end their infatuation with the propagandist John Pilger, who so undeservedly was honored by an obsequious exhibition at the Melbourne Met Museum. Here's the latest chapter of his never-ending apologia for totalitarians, leftist authoritarians, warmongers, and terrorists, this time a rabid denunciation of Israel's action against Hamas forces in Gaza. The horror now reigning on Gaza has little to do with Hamas or, absurdly, Israel's right to exist. Every subsequent war Israel has waged has had the same objective, the expulsion of the native people and every theft of more and more land. Israel is a state shorn of humane traditions of Judaism, whose unrelenting militarism is the sum of an expansionist, lawless, and racist ideology called Zionism. Yeah, he doesn't get my vote. Two god squads, too many. I used to think it is a good sign when bikies turn to god. An ancient religious enmity is at the center of a new conflict in Sydney's bikie scene, with a new gang comprised mainly of Sunni Muslims warring with a group of bikies with a Shiite Muslim background. Fix our internet before you fix our constitution. What brief does Telstra have to preach on this for what expertise? Else Telstra has launched an extraordinary attack on Australia's human rights record, citing the Howard government practice of keeping children in detention as a reason why a charter of rights is needed. In a submission to the National Human Rights Consultation Panel, the country's largest telecommunications company wholeheartedly endorses a charter arguing it would provide greater clarity about the protection of human rights in Australia. Telstra says a charter would help redress the racist underpinnings of constitution which it said had failed to protect Indigenous Australians from official injustices. Which activist in the company, led by a Mexican, is pretending to represent the views of all shareholders? Or all employees? Why not simply put out forward this submission in their own name rather than borrow the company's logo to give it a weight it doesn't deserve?